Okay, section 2.5, we're gonna be talking about the distributive property, but first let's go over some definitions and some terms together. Speaking of terms, what exactly are terms? Well, terms are the quantities that are separated by a plus sign or a minus sign. So for example, if you have an expression like this, 3x plus two, the terms would be 3x and positive two. Okay, so those are the two terms in this particular example. This one over here, the two terms would be like 7y and negative five. So the terms are like basically like groups, they're separated by a plus sign or a minus sign. Now coefficient, what does that mean when they say coefficient? Well, the coefficient is the number that comes in front of the variable. Now when we say in front of, what we're talking about is to the left of the variable, that's in front, okay? So in this case, the coefficient would be three, in this case, the coefficient would be seven, okay? So it's the number to the left or in front of the variable. Like terms are terms where the variable portion is the same. So what do I mean by that? Well, say for example this one, 3x squared plus 5x squared. These are like terms because you can see that we've got x squared, x squared. The variable term is the same. The 3, the coefficient in front, the 5, the coefficient in front, tells us how many of that term we have. We've got 3 of those plus 5 of those. That's 8 of those. See, 8x squared, 8 of that group. So coefficient's a number in front, you just wanna make sure the variable portion is the same and then you can do what's called combining like terms. Combining or adding or subtracting them together. And then lastly, the constant, it's just a number, no variable. So for example, over here, three x plus two, two would be the constant, or negative five would be the constant. It doesn't have a letter, a variable. So definitely something to review and know those terms because you'll see those coming up in algebra. Well, let's talk about the distributive property. So distributive property, what that means is when you have parentheses like this, you take the number that's outside of the parentheses and you multiply or distribute it into the parentheses. Now remember, when two quantities are right next to each other, side by side, what does that mean? Multiplication, right? So what we're doing is we're saying three times x, which is three x, three times two, which is positive six, so we get three x plus six. That's the distributive property in action. So again, when you want to learn algebra one, check out my Learn Algebra One video course for sale, where we go through 87 video lessons that take you step by step by step through algebra one. We talk about the important concepts, formulas, and we go through numerous example problems together to help you learn algebra one. Click the interactive card or the link in the description below to take you over there to get started with some of the free lessons. In the meantime, let's continue on with this video. In action. So again, when you see a number or a quantity, I should say, in front of a group, like a parentheses, there's nothing in between. That means they're multiplied together. You wanna take that quantity on the outside. You wanna distribute it, meaning you're gonna multiply it to what's on the inside of the parentheses. So negative two times five is negative 10, why? negative two times, now this one tricks students a little bit, right here, see this minus seven? Whenever you see a minus sign, you wanna capture that sign that comes in front of the number, to the left of the number. Minus means the same thing as negative. When you see minus seven, that's a negative seven. So negative two times negative seven, positive 14. Remember, negative times a negative is a positive. So that's the distributive property. Let's do some examples, see if you can pause the video, do them on your own to practice, but uh, check your work with what we're gonna show you right now. So. 2y minus three is being multiplied by negative four. So I'm gonna take this negative four, I'm gonna distribute it into the parentheses. Negative four times two y is negative eight y. Negative four times negative three, see the minus three, negative three, positive 12, and that's our answer. Negative eight's the coefficient, 12 is the constant term. Negative eight y, that's a variable term, right? And you got it, so that's the idea. Let's do this one over here. Three times three a squared plus two. Distribute, distribute. Three times three gives us nine a squared. See, I'm multiplying. And then three times positive two is six. There you go, that's your final answer. This one here, we've got one, two, three terms. <clears throat> Notice the terms are separated by minus or plus, so three groups. We're just gonna distribute, distribute, distribute. Five times two gives us 10x squared. Five times negative three gives us negative 15x. Five times seven gives us positive 35, and you've got it. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it a step further, we're gonna combine like terms, okay? So remember, combining like terms, that means that the variable portion is the same, we just have to add or subtract the coefficients, that tells us how many of that group we have, right? So what I like to do is I like to, and you might wanna do this in the beginning too, see, you might wanna capture 
the sine, see, that comes in front of or to the left of. See, this is like plus 3b, that's like positive 3b. Minus 2a, that's like negative 2a. Minus 7b, negative 7b. So you can think of these as like on like little index cards. You can move them around. And uh, what we want to do is we want to combine. So here's the a's, here's the a's. I've got negative 2 of these, positive 4 of these. 4 plus negative 2, hmm, that's positive 2. So 2a. And then we've got 3b and negative 7b. If we add those together, hmm, negative 7 plus 3, that's negative 4. Or you could say minus 4b. Remember, minus and negative, they're, they're interchangeable, just like plus and positive. Those are interchangeable. But that's what you want to do. You want to capture the sign uh, in front. That goes with that term. Okay, let's go to number 5 here. Hmm, let's see. Uh, 6x squared and 9x squared. I'm just going to underline those. And then let's see... Uh, we can combine those together. 6 and 9 gives us 15x squared. Negative 3x, we don't have any more x's, so I'm just going to write that one down. Negative 3x. And then we've got positive 10. We don't have any other just constants by themselves, so I'm just going to put plus 10 down. One thing you might notice that I'm doing is I'm going from the highest power, see x squared, x to the first constant. I'm going down, 2, 1, 0. We'll talk about that more in a future lesson uh, when we get into polynomials, but just, just so you notice, that's what I'm doing there, going in descending order. Last example, we have to do the distributive property here, because remember, multiplication comes before addition and subtraction. Remember our PEMDAS. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this initial step. I'm going to distribute. So that gives us 5x minus 10 minus 2x plus 3. I'm just bringing these down. Now we want to combine like terms. So we've got hmm, 5x and negative 2x. That equals 3x, right? So negative 2x plus 5x. And then we've got the two numbers, negative 10 and positive 3. When we add those together, we get negative 7, or you can think of it as minus 7, and you've got it. Distributive property is really important. You use this a lot as you go through Algebra 1. So make sure you understand how this works, understand the terms, and I'll see you in the next section.